out not to legal from a Daryl Brooks perspective. Fuel me once here, driving instructor of the world. So a few things about the Daryl Brooks case that are different than a lot of others you'll see. One is he's arguing about subject matter jurisdiction, which is kind of baffling because all that means is, does the court have the ability to rule on that particular subject? In this case, homicide, reckless endangerment, intent with the deadly weapon. I would have expected him to argue the other jurisdiction, which is personal jurisdiction, which means, do you have authority over me? Especially as it's a sovereign citizen case he's arguing. Let's talk about both of those. He keeps wanting the court to prove subject matter jurisdiction, but they inherently have it as a court of law, and it's granted to them not only by the state, but by the federal government as well. Under the Constitution, he's arguing that they have rights, but really the Constitution only grants powers, not rights. It enumerates powers. The rights are inherent in each individual. That's the U.S. form of government. Rights are inherent in each individual and they come from God. So he's got 76 counts against him, six of intentional homicide and 70 of use of a deadly weapon, intent to harm, hit and run involving a vehicle, felony bail jumping, which is a previous uh, violation of parole he had, and one count of battery. The judge's job dropped six other charges some relating to this case, and one count of battery uh, where he intentionally ran over his girlfriend, Erica Patterson, same girlfriend in this case, but she dropped it because it's an older charge and not related to this case, which has a lot more mass injuries. They did keep the battery charge against him for Erica Patterson because it was the same day as a parade and connected to this case. So tomorrow we're gonna to talk more about the, sov the sovereign citizen movement and what it is, but why he's representing himself that way. But one thing I feel bad about for Daryl is that his mother says he's not on his medicine right now. He's obviously been diagnosed with something, but not being on his medicine, I think actually is grounds for an appeal. And that's one thing the judge should have taken into consideration a little bit more, but when she ruled he could and was capable of representing himself. Now, Monday, when they come back into court, she's going to ask him if he's been on any medication in the last 24 hours in case he chooses to testify, which he has the right to do. He also has the right to not testify, and she'll instruct the jury that to disregard either and not make any conclusions about either one. And because he doesn't understand the law, he's trying to give it the interpretation that everyday people would. So he misinterprets the terminology that gets